Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures, and it is time for me to take a much-deserved spring break. And by take a spring break, I mean drive my family everywhere and take care of a ton of paperwork and file my taxes and do lots of mundane things that I guess I don't have time for in the regular work week. But you know what? At least I don't have to turn the alarm on in the morning. Hopefully, fingers crossed... That means that this week I can actually get some stuff painted, uh, like I did this last week. I got a couple things painted, at least, and it was absolutely bonkers. Uh, we had some very wild times this past week, um, but I still managed to get a couple things done. And thankfully, for the first time in many, many days, the sun is shining once more in Southern California. And wouldn't you know it? I get home late enough that I don't even get to go outside and spray anything. Uh, so it was a very haphazard blast of sealers this evening, considering it was already dark and I saw one of the lights on my patio is now flickering, which is kind of odd because it shouldn't be. But I went back and did a few more of these Heartbreaker Goblins. Now I know I have it like super duper zoomed in. I really like these guys. They're simple. They're single piece. Uh, they come in a variety of poses. You get a ton of them for a, a cheap price. Um, I did paint a few more in the past. And I have absolutely no idea what colors I used. Not that any of them match. Because why would they, right? None of them. All three of them look totally different. But I actually got a few more of the figures from this warband done. So again, these are the old Heartbreaker molds. And I want to say these are Bob Ollie goblins. That they have the light license rights to, whatever, what have you. These are spin cast resin. So if you don't want STL files, they are actual models. And a bit more armored guy. Again, not the greatest paint jobs, but you know, they're goblins and you need a pile of them. So I guess it doesn't really matter if they all look the same or not. I don't know. Which skin tone do you guys prefer? I kind of like this guy, but on the other hand, I really like the bright ones to kind of, you know, show the difference between, like, the typical orcs. Like, my orcs tend to be a lot greener. But I keep wanting to go and paint more grayish ones, like, uh, the Conquest guys. I've done a few in gray, but then I've done a few in bright green, too. I don't know. Green skins are a spectrum, what can I say? I like this dude. Man, those new Conquest Wadroon coming out, those look cool. Those seriously look cool. I am totally going to get some of those. A random slime. I tried to get some depth to it, but I don't know if that really worked. And I wanted his shield to look old and beat up, which I guess it kind of does. This is from the Oozes and Slimes from Dragon Trapper's Lodge. Which I should have a video on in the next day or so, at least as of this posting, of their various sharky type stuff. Which is quite fun. And I kind of wanted to get some of those finished up prior to doing that. I want to say this was a Papsicles model, and I didn't do the best job on it. And I didn't know what to do with it either. I did paint the face down there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this was Papsicles. I, I honestly don't know what to do with it. But you know what? From a distance, I don't think it's going to really matter. It's just like a sci-fi samurai type model. Speaking of samurai models. Got another of the guys from Saga Minis done. These things called Genbai or something like that. Funny thing is, I was asking all of my 
uh, native Japanese speaking family, and none of them could tell me the name of these fan things that are similar to what the um, sumo ref dudes have. But like, this is like what the samurai generals used to carry. <laughs> Literally, everybody told me something different. That was kind of amusing. Also, went ahead and painted up one of the sumos from Koshuneko. You'll notice he has no shoes on, so they went and made even more sumo guys. Uh, they have fully armored ones with the big Kanobo. They have a bunch of basically naked ones doing sumo moves. They have like a hero and command unit. And I actually beefed this guy up. So I want to say I printed him at about 115, 120. I know I absolutely uh, bumped the resolution or the height of him. And I'm looking, I know I should have some other... Koshuneko samurai hanging around. Not that this is the best paint job. But I really wanted to make sure that, you know, this guy, the, the sumo should be bigger, I feel like. I don't know. Does that mean when I do the guys in armor, I should do them at like 125 then and make them really big? Especially the heroes. I think that'd be kind of cool. But anyway, we'll have more of those. I know I printed more of those, and I know I'm going to print more of those. I think he's just jealous. Like, I got this Dragon Trapper's Lodge one here. And he's just a big boy. They can hang out together. They can be pals. Just palling around, right? I think that's it for the printed stuff this week, actually. I, I tried to finish a few models. Uh, I got the last of the Wormwood guys. I didn't do the best job. You can see it's all splotchy on his skin. But I don't care. <laughs> Maybe I'll go back and fix it up. Maybe I won't. Maybe I just got tired of seeing him and I couldn't make up my mind what I wanted to do with him. But that does complete the war band. As I try to figure out who's missing here. Somebody's missing. The one, I want to say it's a girl. I think it's a girl with the axes or something like in a... Karate horse stance. I don't know where I put them. Oh well, whatever. They're done. I think now I just need to finish up one of the last Crimson Court figures. And, oh, they're there. I found them. Okay. Now the gang's all here. Super zoomed in, mind you, but... They're finished. So, as I said, now I think I just have one figure left from the Crimson Court. And then I need to figure out who's next. I don't know. Ah, the undead. Undead. I need to finish my undead. That's right. All right, what else we got here? I already forgot what this guy's called. Um, Polomark? That sounds right. Sadly, the detail... Okay, you can kind of see. I did actually paint skin tones in that facial area. Not that you can really see it there. And again, this is what happens when I try to... spray stuff in complete darkness. Things don't go as evenly as I'd like them to. But I want to make sure this stuff goes up today. I like having these videos up on Mondays. It does the job. I think I got the, the most important areas painted the way they should be. I would say it's at a reasonably decent level. It ain't perfect. It ain't show winning, but I said it gets the job done, especially from a distance, you know, hanging around with other models. I don't think it's going to look super out of place. I totally love these goblins. They are perfect for like, um, what is it? Cell swords and spell slingers. That's what I'm totally going to use them for. Because I don't have like any goblins that I'm really happy with. I mean, sure I've got stuff like the War Games Atlantic ones. I've got some of the Plastic Mantic ones. Uh, I've got Shield Wolf ones. I mean, I've got quite a few. No Oathmark. we got a bunch, but I, I really like the charm of those guys. 
And finally, speaking of charm, I cannot remember what this guy is called. Um, I know it comes from Trader Galaxy's Bot Wars line. And I don't know what his name is now. I know he's one of the Deceivers, which were their, obviously, uh, Decepticon-inspired evil villainous super robots. And, I mean, honestly, love that paint job. I, I kind of used the one on their website as a starting point, and I don't think mine followed it exactly, but I think it turned out okay. Uh, these models are big, and they're big enough, I'd say, that, you know, you could totally get away with using them in other game systems. Five parsecs, anyone? Stargrave, anyone? Maybe not 40k proper, but I think these models definitely have a lot of use, especially if you're like me and you enjoy the, you know, early 80s super robot aesthetic, the robots in disguise style models. In fact, some of the models even have uh, other forms to them, which I thought was kind of cool. But uh, I noticed I'm going to have to take a closer look at their Overlords figures because they totally remind me of the old, um, what were they, the Pretenders? And they're like a mix of like super robot kaiju type bad guys meets transformers so I'm, I'm totally down with that we'll have a link down there if you guys haven't ever had a chance to check their stuff out but yeah it is a little glossy still we'll have to work on that and i was talking with sparkle trout he's like they should totally do some like more diclone style models i'd have to agree with him on that diclone's got some interesting designs i tried to paint the little purpley spots on all of his blades, but they didn't really seem to come through as nicely as I had hoped. I'm going to definitely have to give him another ceiling coat, though. Fun models! I am absolutely going to be finishing up some of the other ones I have. So, all in all, I'd say a nice little haul for this week, despite the hectic schedule that everything presented itself and the multiple activities and venues that I seem to have ended up taking my kids to and have to stay at, so I'm, I'm happy about that. I do have to congratulate my, my daughter on taking home some trophies at her first karate tournament. That was kind of cool to see, being the doting father that I pretend to be sometimes. <laughs> that was cool. That did eat up a good chunk of my weekend, but hey, you know what? Family first, right? Um, if you are interested in any of these models, as always, we will have those links down below. And I absolutely wholeheartedly encourage you to enjoy this stuff as much as I have. And hopefully show it off as well if you have your social media accounts. Tag me, whatever. Um, you know, obscurities and miniatures or put that hashtag weekly painting progress. I love to see what everybody else is up to. Um, and hopefully I was going to say this week I will have that link to the discord server i have to help my wife finish getting a new car uh, to go with her new job <laughs> so once i've got all of that paperwork out of the way we will put that link up i'll put it up on patreon so we'll, we'll, we'll have a, a small start and then before i unleash the floodgates and hey it's a good incentive for you guys to check it out i don't like to plug it and i don't like to you know chill my own work but you know if you guys are curious i do have that and then maybe it give me a good excuse to post stuff on it more often. I don't know. I feel like I post a lot more on YouTube, but enough about that. Uh, anyway, like I said, uh, we will have those links down below. Take a look, and I will, as always, get to chat it up in the comment section, because I am free this week. Heck yeah. So with that said then, this has been High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures, saying thanks for watching, and we will see you back here soon. Bye-bye.